In this video, I'll be installing Kupfer Linux, which is Arch Linux for mobile, from Ubuntu on a OnePlus 6T. Kupfer Mobile is heavily based on post-market OS, so a lot of the bootstrap methods will be similar. Here are the supported devices for Kupfer Linux and I'm going to be installing on a OnePlus 6T that you can see here. So first we need to set up our Ubuntu installation so that it can properly run Kupfer Bootstrap. As you can see, we need these three packages for sure, which is Python 3 on Ubuntu. The package name is Python 3, Docker. But in this case, the package is docker.io. And we also need to install Git. So here I'm just making sure they're already installed. If you don't have them installed, you'll see the installation process continue. During my test phase here, I also found that for my Ubuntu installation, I needed to install these packages as well. I'll put this in the description below. This allows things to compile. Once we have the correct dependencies installed, we can then continue with the instructions here, which talks about adding a specific user group to Docker. I don't know if this is actually necessary on my machine, but I did this and then I restarted and I'm already in that mode here in this tutorial. So next we need to actually grab the Kupfer Linux bootstrap from GitLab. We can do that by following the instructions to clone the repository. Be sure to replace the branch here. I'm using the development branch, which seems to work. I haven't tried the main branch, but at this point in time, this branch works. So now we can go into the directory and see that we've cloned everything. We also need to install the Python dependencies with this command here, pip3 install. On Ubuntu, you'll get this message telling you you can't install them. I've tried many methods. This is the only one that worked for me is by using this additional command here, which is break system packages, which didn't turn out to be as scary as it sounded. But now with that installed, we want to create the sim link for the bootstrap, which will just simplify things so you don't have to go to certain directories to run the command. So with that done, we can run Kupfer Bootstrap and everything should be ready for configuring the package. So the next step is to create a configuration file. This will tell Kupfer Bootstrap what parameters you want to give for building the image that you will then flash to your device. In the documentation, you can see an example where you can use multiple profiles that will then allow you to run Kupfer Bootstrap with an additional parameter that you can build images that are different. So specific images, maybe you want one for GNOME Mobile, one for Plasma Mobile, or one for a specific device. So this command is built in Kupfer Bootstrap config init which will initialize that file at first. And then for most of the parts, you can use the default settings by pressing enter. At some stages, we do want to put in our specific information so that we can build for the device that we want. So 
So here, yes, take note of where this config file is saved as we will go through that later. So as mentioned, you can set up different profiles and first you wanna set up a default profile which will run by default unless you specify the specific profile when you are running Coop for Bootstrap for building an image. Again, each profile can take from the parent profiles so you don't have to double the information each time if you want. But here I'm just setting up a simple default profile that I can use for this one device. I will note that you do have to be connected to the internet if you haven't figured that out already, even during this process, as it will pull additional packages and build information from the sources mentioned. So after a little while here, we will get to the device selection prompt. And once we are there, we should type in the specific device name. So here we want to choose the device that is supported. For me, I'm doing the OnePlus 6T, which is right here, SDM. 845 OnePlus Fajita. So I enter that as our default device and then the configuration will continue to build itself. If at any point it needs information, it will stop for you to enter that. But be patient as it does take a while in certain times here. So at this point, it's now asking for the flavor that we want. So there are these different flavors, Gnome Mobile, Plasma Mobile. At this point in time, it might change depending on your system or what is in the repository. So I'm just using Fosh, which seems to work most of the time as my default profile. But again, you can set that up in your config later and don't worry you can change this at any point after the initial setup if you want you can put a password for that installation i'm using one two three four so i can remember it if you do that do remember this if you don't enter a password it will prompt you to enter one later during the build the extra megabyte size. I have no idea what that's about, but I used 800 as based on the config example. So if you want to edit the configuration file after, remember where it tells you that is. So here you can use any text editor to edit this and you can see all the information that we entered. And if you want, you can copy this config file that I did. I can put the information below but it's a good idea to set up your own. Next, we want to build the image. So this is going to take a long time and there are a few commands here that we need to make note of. So it will build the default profile by default, or if you add the profile name for a specific profile at the end as a parameter, it will build that one. So here we can type in the command, image build. And we can see it is now building these different packages, downloading the pieces it needs. And this does take quite a while, so we're going to skip ahead to when it's done. If at any point you run into errors, it may be due to some packages not installed, or maybe it's just not working for that flavor or device at this moment in time. So for me, before, sometimes GNOME Mobile would work, sometimes it doesn't. It will vary depending on your machine. And then 
after the image is built, we can flash it, but it will take a while. So let's skip ahead to when it's done. If the image is built successfully, you will see as in the terminal here. Next, we want to flash the image to our device. So here's my device, the OnePlus 6T. I need to first boot it into fast boot mode. And once it is in fast boot mode, we then need to connect the USB cable and make sure it's plugged into our Ubuntu computer. So with that all connected, we can then flash the image. But before doing that, I'm going to erase the DTBO as per the post market OS instructions. Next, we run this command, Kupfer bootstrap image flash. And I want to flash actually the boot partition. So here it is a boot image so that it knows how to boot the OS. If successful, you'll see the command as such. And now we can flash the image. Coop for bootstrap image, flash full and user data. This will flash the OS to the user data partition, which is usually the correct one. Again, this process takes quite a while as there's a lot of things being pushed to the device. If at any point there is an error, you'll be notified in the terminal. But if all goes well, it should finish without any errors. And then we can boot into Coop for Linux for the first time. There are a few other bootstrap commands, but for this tutorial, we're just focusing on this. Once the image has been flashed, we can type fast boot reboot and it will reboot the device and begin to boot the OS. So here we can see it is booting for Linux and we will get to the graphical environment, which I selected was the Fosh environment. Remembering the password that we chose earlier, 1234, to get into the system. And here we are. If you want more information about the graphical environments, it is heavily based on post-market OS, so you can check out my other videos for GNOME Mobile, Plasma Mobile, or Droidian, which is quite similar on the outside. The only difference with Kupfer Linux is that it's based on Arch Linux. So if we look through our settings, we can see that the system is indeed running on Arch and if you use the terminal, it will work as if you're using Arch Linux. If you have any questions or troubles with this, please feel free to leave a comment below. I'll do my best to help you out. And if you enjoyed this video and you haven't done so already, please subscribe. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.